It seems ironic to me that we live in a world where more people would rather get their weather predictions from a groundhog rather than actually listen to what climate scientists tell us all along. I mean, think about that. Good old Phil over here has been correct 39% of the time. <laughs> but when we see our sea levels rising, when we see our hurricanes getting stronger, and when we see places getting flooded that have truly never been flooded before, we turn a blind eye. We turn a blind eye to the very problem that we ourselves helped to create, not as Democrats and not as Republicans, but as human beings. Unfortunately, the phrase climate change in and of itself has taken on a very negative connotation over the years. In fact, if you were to even mention the phrase climate change to anybody, it'll almost always result in a heated debate. <laughs> Believe me, I know because I've tried. The cold hard truth is that the phrase climate change has become a trigger word for both sides of the political spectrum to a point that people don't even feel comfortable talking about it anymore. But that begs the question, why? Why is it that we always have to take politics into consideration every time we're trying to solve a major issue? Does the thermometer read differently whether you're a Democrat or a Republican? Of course not. 100 degrees is going to be 100 degrees across the board. But that's how we view things in modern society. The real question we should be asking ourselves is whether or not we actually have a solution to climate change. And at the rate we're currently going, the answer is no. Because every single time we take a step forward and coming up with an actual solution, we eventually end up taking four steps backwards. And the media doesn't make it any better. In fact, if you listen to what the media has to say nowadays, you'll always see something like this. <laughs> Grim, I know. But I'm here to tell you that it's not as bad as it seems. In fact, climate change breakthroughs do exist. And even more importantly, allow me to be the first one to tell you that we actually have a decent shot at solving the climate crisis. My name is Aryan Runjan, and I am a climate activist. When I was 14 years old, I found out about a nonprofit, nonpartisan grassroots advocacy organization known as Citizens Climate Lobby, or CCL for short. Now, CCL's goal is to create a broad, sustainable foundation for political action across all geographical regions, regardless of your political affiliation. What's so unique about this organization is the fact that they don't care about the politics. They only have one goal in mind, to actually get countries from all over the world to pass federal legislation so that we can lower our carbon emissions. And they've actually been pretty successful in terms of doing so. In fact, as we speak, they actually have a bill on the floor of the Congress in the hopes that this legislation will become the first of its kind to combat climate change and it's known as the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act of 2019. But again, if you're listening to the media, you probably wouldn't even know that a bill like this exists. But let's not kid ourselves. Climate change isn't going to have this one end-all, be-all solution. In fact, climate change won't even be solved in a day. The only way we can actually find a solution is by taking it one breakthrough at a time. But not all breakthroughs have to occur at the national level. In fact, small change can be a breakthrough nonetheless, because one person trying to save the planet is one less person trying to destroy it. Now, personally, I've tried to play my own role right here at American Heritage School in Plantation, Florida, where I actually had the pleasure last year to create my own club. You guessed it, it's called the Climate Change Club. <laughs> and the purpose of this club is to actually raise awareness for climate justice right here on campus. And before I even created this club, a lot of my friends actually came up to me and asked, how it was, it was even possible that we as teenagers could even attempt to solve a problem as big as climate change. After all, we're not really politicians and we don't really have much say in our government. And that is true to some extent. But we need to understand that there are just so many other ways to get involved. In fact, take my club for instance. I have three different departments depending on what students would like to do. Let's say you're a really extroverted presenter type of person. Then you'd probably fall under the political lobbying department which focuses on actually reaching out to local elected officials right here in South Florida. In fact, just last month, I actually got the opportunity to speak with Senator Marco Rubio's staff in regards to actually coming up with climate solutions for the future. And for me, it was such an amazing experience, not only to speak one-on-one -on -one with someone who had the power to influence federal legislation, but because I realized that there are so many people in the world trying to find 
a climate solution. And if I can do it, so can all of you. In fact, I encourage all of you to reach out to your local officials. Get the word out there, because that's the only way we're going to find a solution. But let's say you're not really into the whole political lobbying idea. Instead, you really like to get your word out through words. Now, we have a writing department for that, too. And the main purpose of the writing department is to actually reach out to local newspapers. In fact, I also have gotten a couple of my own letters to the editors published in different newspapers with the goal of actually telling you guys about what CCL is and how we can help them. And again, this is something all of you can do at home. Write out to your local newspapers. Get your message out there. Not only because you can say that you're a published author, but because years from now, when your kids and your grandchildren ask you what you were doing at the start of the climate crisis, you have proof to tell them that you were fighting along. But all right, let's say you're not really the political lobbyist, you don't really like the writing. Well, then you're probably someone who likes to engage in more interactive activities, someone who really likes to get their hands dirty. Well, we have a department for that too. And that department focuses on beach cleanups and fundraisers. All these departments just go to show that no matter what you like to do, no matter where your interests are, there's a place for you to fight climate change. And these breakthroughs are just the beginning. In fact, international breakthroughs are making perhaps the biggest change in our fight against the climate crisis. We've actually had the Paris Climate Accords, where leaders from all over the country came together, united as one, to fight the problem of climate change. And this was actually the first time that leaders from all over the world took a stand. They're trying to make a global response to the everlasting threat of climate change. And the way they're trying to do that is by keeping our global increase in temperature much less than the 1.5 degree Celsius mark for the entire century. That's a huge breakthrough. And although it's a step in the right direction, we cannot stop there. In fact, we need to understand that we have to hold uh, countries accountable. We need to make sure that they're upholding their end of the bargain in the climate accords, because when climate change hits, it's not going to affect one country at a time. When we see the worst of climate change, it's going to affect every single person on the planet. Therefore, it's only fitting that we take this opportunity to put our differences aside and actually work towards the greater good. Unfortunately for us, the youth are standing up to do just that. We actually have had the United Nations Youth Climate Summit. And the main goal of the summit is to bring the youth and the policymakers together to find climate solutions for the future. Think about that. We as kids have always grown up knowing and being told that we couldn't make significant change until we were much, much older. And now, the adults are coming to us looking for what the solutions may be. Oh yes, the tables have definitely turned. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Climate strikes are becoming a more and more frequent occurrence, whether it's the United States, China, or India. Countries are starting to ban the use of plastic goods. They're looking more towards renewable energy sources. And more importantly, they're trying to pollute less. Just here in Florida, we've elected a chief resiliency officer whose main job is to conduct resiliency goals for the state and to protect our local community coastlines. Major, major breakthroughs. Now, I know what you're thinking. All right, Aryan, we get it. Climate breakthroughs do exist. How can we help? Well, I'm glad you asked, because <laughs> the one thing you can start is by actually looking at climate action groups near you. Because there are a ton. Whether it's Greenpeace USA, the Climate Reality Project, or even CCL itself, no bias, but CCL is probably the best one. The best way is to actually reach out to those organizations because they want you so badly. They want you to join forces with them so that you could be a part of the next climate solution. Whether you're a singer, an artist, or an engineer, there's a place for you to fight climate change. Remember, your planet needs you. And who knows, maybe you too could be a part of the next major breakthrough when it comes to climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, I know we are more than capable of finally solving this issue. I mean, what haven't we been able to accomplish so far? We used to have computers the size of rooms, and now we can hold one in our hand. We used to think that the Earth was flat. Some of us still do. <laughs> But the point is, with satellites up in space, we can prove that the world is actually round. 
We used to dream of flying alongside the birds, and now we can do so with airplanes traveling more than 400 miles per hour. These are all major breakthroughs. So just think what could happen if we started investing a little bit of our time and a little bit of our effort. Solving a problem that we ourselves have created should be a walk in the park. All we have to do is turn the page to a new field of breakthroughs. Because once we do, I assure you, we can solve any problem we want. We can make any breakthrough we want. And that includes solving this climate crisis once and for all. Now, we've always been told that we live in the age of technology, an age where information and data science binds us together. But allow me to add on to that. Not only do we live in the age of technology, but we live in the age of the climate crisis. And it's up to us whether we want to be found victorious in this never-ending fight to correct our past mistakes. But I assure you that with a little bit of time, we can be victorious. Now, whether we want to label the change in our environment as climate change or not, there should honestly be no reason to continue polluting our environment. Think of it like this. Let's say that we actually start taking the climate crisis more seriously now. And then 50 years down the line, climate scientists come up to us and say that they were wrong all along, that climate change was in fact a hoax. Would it all be a waste? Of course not. During that 50 year time period, we would have improved, major, uh, we would have improved air quality in all major cities. We would have cleaned up our waterways. And more importantly, we would have lowered our carbon emissions. Either way, sounds like a win-win to me. The bottom line is this. Maybe we won't make the breakthrough we so desperately need. Maybe one day in the future, we actually do come together to actually fight climate change, only to realize that we were just too late. No matter what scenario we put ourselves in, we are in the end game now. And it is our time to assemble. <laughs> Otherwise, we could be wiped away just like that. We owe it not only to ourselves, but to all the future generations to try to solve the problem, solve the breakthroughs for today so that a solution is in the future. And the time for that is now. Thank you. <laughs>